Hi guys, welcome back to the Max Spence Business Podcast. Today's guest is Marco Mack. He's the founder of The Mastery Hub, the world's first digital coach consulting platform. They help individuals and organizations master the most important aspects of life with cutting edge coach consulting programs. It's great to have you on the show today, Marco. Well, thanks so much, Max. That was wonderful. Um, started my Started my career very similar to you, actually, Max. I actually started in uh, in estate, in real estate. So my very first job was in real estate at 18 years old uh, in the probably worst period in the world because it was 2008. So I was trying to sell a house, pretty much sell a dream to people. Uh, but of course, the time wasn't the right one. <laughs> so effectively, has been has uh, been a great learning curve. And there I probably learned one big lesson that uh, sometimes in order to get very extraordinary result in life you gotta have to have an unconventional uh, unconventional approach to life and i think the unconventional approach was born by the fact that i was doing door to door um looking to find a property to sell and effectively my time was very poorly spent until at one point i found um uh, a gentleman that basically had a little time in his hand and I started going to his house, bringing his breakfast. And that guy turned out to be the database of the entire district where I was working because he started basically pointing me out to the people that were selling the house in that specific district. Why I'm telling you the story, uh, because I believe that in business, the best approach is to always go toward finding the most unconventional approach because if you do uh, what other people do, you will get the same result. If you copy sooner or later, you know, you will be kind of getting at a point where there's nothing else to copy. So either you innovate or you have an unconventional approach to start. And this is what led me into creating the Mastery app, uh, which is, as you uh, cleverly mentioned, is the world's first digital consulting platform. We are harmoniously blending um, coaching and consulting. And we have eight uh, digital uh, coach consulting um, representative all across the world in five different countries at the moment. Uh, US, um, we have one coming up in Canada, uh, one in South Africa and the UK. Uh, this is one of my business, but let's uh, let's dive in into the others. Otherwise, this becomes a monologue and I want to hear your perspective as much <laughs> as mine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no, no, that, 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 that that actually sounds sounds amazing and it's super interesting uh and yeah like uh we'll, we'll, we'll jump into it so why don't we start with um uh where did you sort of grow up uh what school did you go to and then i'm guessing after you finished school you got into real estate or was this uh like were you doing real estate while at university yeah oh good question so i actually grown up in uh, uh in sicily island in the south of italy I've been blessed with the sun for my entire teenager years. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic to grow up in a place where uh, it's so pristine and untouched. Uh, I got to 18 years old where, as um, many 18 years old, I was completely confused of what I wanted to do next. And um, I didn't have, let's say, that kind of uh, helicopter view that I have now. So I was a little bit like, okay, what's uh, what's next on the menu? And uh, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So the first thing I did is I traveled across Europe with a backpack uh, and I did what's called an e-trail. Uh, that was going all across Europe, backpack on a train. Uh, we did nine capital, uh, European capital in 25 days. And I think that was when things started to move inside me. I started thinking about, okay, well, look, there is so much more than the four walls surrounding me back home. Uh, I want to explore new culture and I want to learn English as that would be uh, the perfect way of really accessing the knowledge that it's filled with in this world. And uh, yeah, that brought me off going back home and uh, I started studying at university. And at the same time, I got a job unconventionally again uh, as an estate agent. And as I was saying there, um, worst period in the world to actually <laughs> get into real estate. Uh, big lesson I learned there, that uh, look, when you're young and you have so much energy, you have so much to give, um, 
older people that probably will be your target audience where you sell uh, houses they will be looking at you like who is this kid is just kind of out of the block and effectively right there it was all about really changing that kind of narrative so um, the first example I gave you is I found a person, instead of investing my time of going door to door, I found a person that could basically process information for me. So that's a right approach, I think, in business generally. Go to the right person that could kind of uh, get you ahead. The hard work is needed, but if you find a mentor, if you find a person that can get you ahead, you will be going much, much, much faster. And the second thing I learned from real estate was um, I was basically... I found a house which was uh, very, very easy sell uh, at the point because the guy needed money. So I showed up at his uh, porch and I said, hey, I'm selling a house. Uh, I'm looking for a house to sell. Are you selling? And the guy looked at me and said, uh, yes, I am selling, but I will never sell to a kid. Uh, you're 18. You're probably not even 18 years old. I said, yes, I am. Uh, I will never waste my time with you. And I said, OK, well, thanks so much again. I appreciate it. The day after, I came, back, I came back to exactly the same place with a sign in my hand. And the sign was the address of his house. And uh, in very big red letter, it was saying, sold. Uh, I basically rang the bell again. I said, hey. And he said, like, what are you doing here again? I said, please take this sign. He said, what's this sign about? I said, if you take this sign, uh, I can guarantee you that if you give me the job, if you um, give me the opportunity to sell your house, then you will need the sign because I will sell it and I'll put all my energy to sell it as quick as possible. <laughs> What's the moral of the story here? The guy was completely shocked. And uh, because of my uh, unconventional approach and even a little bit of arrogance, uh, genuine arrogance, he actually gave me the opportunity to um, collaborate with him. And I then sold the house three months later. So... The way I structure usually my communication every podcast, I like to give as many information out to people uh, to really motivate people that everything seems impossible when you start. But more you put yourself out there, more the things get into uh, really creating uh, the approach toward optimism and the approach toward making great waves into lives. And then the more you grow, the more you can make an impact. It's a long process, but the first step is what counts. Yeah, 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 a hundred percent on that, and and that 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 is a super interesting story, and, and I love that you sort of just you, you had the mindset back then of just being like, I'm just gonna go up to this guy and I, like I I will send I, like I will sell your house, right? Which is like the the mindset you sort of need when, when you need when you're gonna be starting a business, right? So, did you have this like did you have that mindset like growing up or was it like you know was it a mentor that sort of taught you it or how, how did you sort of develop that confidence and arrogance uh to go and actually come back the next day and say hey hey here's a sign i'm gonna sell your house yeah well great question i think there was a combination of things so first of all i was broke so <laughs> when you're broke and you really need some money and uh i really wanted to get a place for myself because I felt the the place I was living in, it wasn't kind of uh, reflecting my belief and my my values. So I really needed to, you know, get out and uh, and find my own place. But you know, to find your own place, I needed money. And uh, effectively, I was always looking out for opportunities. And when the guy told me like, "Oh, well, you're a kid." I almost felt like instead of being offended, I felt, oh, what a great challenge. Imagine if I could actually sell the house to this guy. This guy will never forget that for the, his entire life. And in fact, with this guy, uh, we still, we're still in touch. We actually, <laughs> he became one of my mentors and, uh, and he, he was a great businessman. But I, he said, you know, when I saw, uh, when I saw a guy showing up on my porch um, asking, I was like, Come on, I'm not gonna waste my time with this kid. Um, the mindset I think over the years has, has changed. Um, I think arrogance doesn't get you anywhere. I mean, if you're 18 years old and you have a lot to give and you have a little bit of arrogance, it's kind of you know the right spice into a good into a good kind of flavor mix of um, of what you are bringing to to you and what you're bringing to others. But I think uh, 10 years later, I can say, well, a little bit more than 10 years later, I can say that um, I think the right free uh, values that complete embrace are compassion, 
um, a motivation. And I do have a little bit of obsession because I think passions gets you up to a point. But then if you're really obsessed to, let's say, make an impact in the world and helping people life, then you become so obsessed that you're really uh, kind of pushing, pushing forward. Uh, and I think that's what you need. You need to push forward every single day of your life because at one point people will start getting to know you and the uh, more they do, more your life will start to change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like 100% again with that. And yeah, uh, ha ha like that. that's, uh, that's something that, that I hear a lot, uh, you know, being obsessed with what you do, right? Because like when you're obsessed with something, it's like um, you, you'll, you'll keep going with it no matter what, even if like you're going through really hard times, even if you're going through really great times, you'll just keep going. Right. And, and I think, uh, Conor McGregor actually said that when, when he was talking about the sport, when he was training, like he's just obsessed with like MMA. That's why he got so good. It's just like, it's all he thinks about. It's all he did. Like, like that's all he wanted to do was just be a professional UFC fighter and be the best in the world. And, you know, he, he, he achieved that. Um, but now sort of transitioning now, uh, onto a little bit later into your life. So um, I saw that you went to university, you went to university for marketing. Uh, how did you sort of find, uh, you know, uh, that course at university? And do you, do you think it sort of helped you out a lot for preparing you for like, you know, the, the jobs you got uh, later on in life? Oh, good question. So I think uh, there are quite a lot of unconventional stories uh, as part of my journey. So, um, to give you a little bit of uh, a quick breakdown, I, after my job in a state agent, I, as a state agent, I moved to, um, I moved to London. I decided that I really wanted to explore and, uh, and learn a new language and also really deep dive into new culture. So back then when I arrived to London, uh, again, I was, I was a kid with full of uh, dreams in my head, but uh, very little money in my pocket. So effectively, even though I had this ambition, aspiration to get a degree and learn a new language, the reality was that the money that I had were way too low and uh, the English that I had was way too bad. So effectively, I had to face the reality of, okay, what's in front of me and how can I get to where I want to go with what I have, right? And I think that's kind of a very challenging reality of a 19 years old this kind of prying itself into a new adventure. And um, I did quite a few different jobs from um, washing up plates to making up coffees and, and stuff. And then I got to an opportunity that, that changed my life. And uh, that opportunity was kind of generated by a mix of luck, a mix of um, willingness to succeed and, uh, and also really the eagerness of uh, becoming someone that was not yet ready to be. And uh, I will develop a little bit more into this. So effectively I was working in a coffee shop in uh, central London and uh, it had been already around a year and a couple of months. And uh, I felt that my life was just going straight in front of my eyes and I couldn't reach it. I was a little bit lost until the moment where I was just about to make my way home. And it was raining that day in London, strangely enough. So uh, I hope on the underground, I opened a newspaper. And while I opened a newspaper, I found that there was like a big opening of a, a big hotel called uh, Bulgari Hotel. Bulgari Hotel is part of uh, uh, LVMH group, so Louis Vuitton and Marchandon. And uh, it is one of the biggest jewelry brands in the world. And uh, as part of their brand, uh, they also have quite a few uh, very high lux hotels uh, spread out across the world. To give you a sense of high lux, uh, the price is starting at 600 pounds uh, per night, all the way up to 15 to 20,000 pounds per night. I'm not sure what that would be in Canadian dollars, but it's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and effectively, there was, uh, there was this ad, and um, in this ad, they were looking for they were looking for so many different positions. And uh, I said, okay, well, that looks interesting. That could be an opportunity that could get me out of uh, making coffee for the, for the rest of my life. So at that point, what I did is I look at the date and um, it was a job opening. So it was basically a day opening when all the people get there and uh, they basically present themselves. And if they like you, they'll kind of give you an opportunity to come back and have a second interview. There were two problems. Problem number one, I was dressed like crap. 
because uh, effectively I was supposed to bike home, but because it was raining, I hoped on the tube, I opened a newspaper and I found that opportunity. So two things flash inside my, my mind. One, I'll get on, I'll get myself presentable and I get to this interview. The problem was that uh, the day that I opened the newspaper was the last day of the actual interview. <laughs> so I said, what, what should I do? And, uh, and then I decided to carpe diem, to really capture the moment. So I showed up to the interview dressed extremely badly. And there I learned a very big lesson where uh, when you act and look, and when you act and look unconventional, but when you basically dress like crap in front of a five-star hotel for rounded, uh, surrounded by, um, people well-dressed and well-educated, trust me, you will not go unnoticed. People will look at you, even if it's the wrong reason, doesn't matter. It would be on you to convert that wrong reason into the right reason. Um, look, long story short, uh, the guy uh, basically after three hours of me waiting in the room thinking, what am I gonna tell to this guy? I have no experience, I'm a young kid and uh, there's no way that I'm gonna get a job. Uh, the guy showed up, uh, he looked at me and he said, um, oh, what are you doing here? <laughs> and I was like, well, look, allow me to stop you. Uh, if you if you compare myself to all the other great people in the other room, well-dressed, well-educated, uh, with everything figured out, then don't even waste my time. Don't even waste uh, your time with me. Um, effectively, I won't be the right use of your time. And he said, what do you mean? I said, look, I'm not well-dressed, clearly. Uh, I'm not well educated, uh, but however, I do have something that I think a lot of people don't have. And I do have the, the anger of making something out of myself. And I'll be doing everything possible day after day to work three times, five times harder than the people around me to prove, to prove you wrong and to prove me wrong. And uh, effectively, the guy was a little bit shocked. And he said, like, do you have a CV? Uh, I didn't have a CV. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, uh, man, I'm, I'm, he, said, he said, look, man, I'm sorry, but you are in the wrong place. And I was like, no, no, I understand. Look, I wanted to, I wanted to, give, it a, to give it a go. And uh, he said, any other question? I said, yes, I do have one final question. And I said, uh, how does it feel to be in the other side of the table? How does it feel to be you? Uh, I said, I look at the guy straight in the eye. I said, how does it feel to be you? You know, you got where you wanted to, you work yourself out to get there. But I do feel subtly inside my skin that you've been given the right opportunity at the right time where you had nothing figured out. Is that right? And the guy said, how do you know? And I was like, I felt it. And I said, yes, I, I did get an opportunity. I started my career as a, a washing up, um, a washing washing machine in, um, uh, in Alain Ducasse in Las Vegas. Uh, I was just a washing up boy. And then I basically scaled myself up. And I was like, well, uh, if you've been given that opportunity, why wouldn't you give the same opportunity to myself? <laughs> and, uh, and the guy was shocked. Uh, he, he looked at me and he said, look, first of all, the opportunity that they received when I asked for it, I was well dressed. You dress like crap. Uh, and I was like, yes, I was. But, uh, and I explained the story how I got there. Long story short, here is to answer your question, a little bit of background story. I, I got the job. Uh, that job led me to get a position as a, as a client relations uh, at the Bulgar Hotel. I was working at night and then that gave me the opportunity and the money to basically get a course in university in marketing during the day. So I was working at night around 12 hours shift. And then at the end of my universe, sorry, at the end of my uh, shift, I was going straight to uni and uh, study for around six hours. And I did that for three years, uh, around for three years. Uh, I graduated with first class degree. I pitched myself to one of the guests that was inside of the hotel. There was the CEO of Sashi and Sashi, big advertising group. And that started my career in marketing. So I give you a little bit of flavor about myself and my backend story before we dive into the business side of it. Yeah. Wow. I, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely blown away. Like, and remember like absolutely blown away with the, uh, with that story there. Like that, that's, 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 that, 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 that's like the type of stories that, that you read in like, um, 
uh, in books or you see in movies, right? Like that, that whole moment, like that, that's absolutely crazy. Uh, and, and w- w- like, where did that come from? Or was that just like one of those like random moments where you just said the right things at the right mm-hmm. time and it just sort of worked out and you like, you, like it just sort of came out of you? Well, look, I think it was definitely a combination of things. So there was a layer of desperation again. I think uh, if you use desperation in the right way, uh, it could be the propeller to change your life. I was, I was, I had nothing to lose, um, and effectively, I had so much to give, but I didn't have anyone that would give me the opportunity to give. If that makes sense. Yeah. So, effectively, I was really trying desperately to have someone to say, "Well, guys, give me a shot. I, I could really make a difference here." But if no one gives me a shot, how can I? And effectively, I had to create my, my shot. And uh, at the end of um, when I had gotten that shot in, uh, in Bulgaria, there were so many different things that, that, that happened. The first one is I had received, um, basically I bought a, a book, uh, an English book called Love Marks. And uh, this was a book about emotional marketing. So it was really showing the power of our marketing a business could basically be changed by connecting to your client or customers at an emotional level. So rather than selling something and be hardcore selling, connect to them emotionally. Because if you do, people will buy. And uh, they will not care as much as what you sell. They, Of course, what you sell has to have a value for them. But if you do it uh, emotionally, you connect with them in the right emotional level, then they will come to you. Why am I telling you the story? Because the guy that wrote the book was the same guy that I then pitched myself and I wrote a letter. I put it under his door and led me to get a job in one of the biggest advertising companies in the world, which is Sashi and Sashi. Um, did I know that this guy three years from now, uh, from that very moment when I bought the book, would uh, be in the same hotel at the same place, the same time as me? No, I had no idea. Uh, This guy had become my mentor, but of course he didn't know. (laughs) So what happened is after reading all about this guy, after falling in love with marketing, and he was the reason why I'd fallen in love with marketing. um, Two years later, that guy was basically standing under the same roof as me. The difference is he was in a suite and I was in a, uh, I, I was on my desk, you know, basically bringing up his newspapers. <laughs> so that, that was different. And um, look, I would love to tell you that at that moment, I met the guy in an elevator. I gave a, an elevator pitch and I got the job. Uh, no, that didn't happen. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a movie. It was real life. So everything played out in a very different way. But what really happened is um, this guy was basically staying at hotel almost one month, uh, every, every month for, for, around, for around five to 10 days because the, the headquarter was in, uh, in New York. Uh, sorry, the headquarter was in London, but he was based in New York. So what I did is I, I wrote a letter uh, and under that letter, the reason of the letter was there were two premises. The first premise is I told him my story from starting working as an estate agent, selling houses door by door to all my career, washing plates and making coffees to that very moment of working at night and studying during the day to get somewhere. And then I told him, I believe in life. If someone changes your life, if someone changes the direction of your life, you must tell them doesn't matter how much you have to lose, tell them. And I said, that's why I'm writing this letter, even though I know that if you would report this letter, that would lead me to lose the job that's currently paying for my university. And uh, look, that, that letter was, uh, what happened after was phenomenal. The guy, um, uh, after 20 days, he came back to me, he read the letter, he said, this is one of the most uh, beautiful piece of writing that I've read. Uh, even though it wasn't perfect English at the time, he said, you can see that you spoke from the heart and that's what counts. Um, come and see me next time. And uh, I really want to talk to you. So I showed up there with the same book uh, to which I had learned English um, three years uh, earlier. And he said, I think you need a break and you need a shot and I'm going to give you that shot. And um, he gave me two weeks work experience. I left the Bulgari Hotel three years later with a degree uh, with first class and uh, a work experience. 
even though I had applied to the same company, I had gotten rejected. I had applied to 337 work application uh, without uh, ever receiving a response. And then the unconventionality approach of being um, and acting different led me to the, the job that I always dreamt of. Uh, yeah, <laughs> long story, <laughs> but hopefully, yeah, yeah, hopefully no, it was no, valuable no, for your no, listener. Yeah, like that, that, that's absolutely insane. Like, did, did you say you, you applied to like 373 jobs or 370 jobs? 337. Yeah, I'll read them down. All of them. Like, um, because I, I, I was, I, I'm just going to say like right there, like, like all, already you, you can see like the determination that you have to like, you know, like to make something of yourself, uh, which I think is so crucial to like being an entre entrepreneur and building your own business. But like just that alone, sending 337, you know, like resumes or CVs out or whatever you want to call it. Right. Uh, trying that much is absolutely insane. Like I I've actually never heard of that before. Like the, the, the most I've, you know, like you have a conversation with somebody and they're like, yeah, I'm trying to get a job. And it's like, oh, like, you know, how many places you applied to? And it's like, oh, you know, like three or four, <laughs> but you're like, you were just like, all right, no, just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Like that, that, like that just shows to like the testament of like, like if, if you're determined and you just don't give up and you just keep going, it's like you will eventually make it, which I absolutely love. Oh, thank you so much. I think a rejection uh, then became the, the propeller uh, of my life because effectively look every day I was looking at my emails and I was always getting the same response. Uh, we had carefully <laughs> reviewed your application, but we're very sorry to hear. We were very sorry to inform you that unfortunately you didn't make it. Um, the most probably beautiful moment of my life, one of the most beautiful moments, when I had walked into the same office that had gotten rejected a few months earlier, uh, with the CEO of the company uh, welcoming me into it, and uh, yeah. we're talking a company that is basically as uh, over. Well, he's in 92 different countries. So it's, it's the second biggest advertising group in the world. Wow. Uh, which is called Publicist. Holy crap. That's, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is absolutely insane. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I like, I would, I would love to hear more, but I, I mean, we, we, we only have a certain amount of time. Uh, but yeah, like, why don't we jump into actually the company that you're starting now? Uh, so like, how, how did the, you know, Mastery Hub came about and how did you actually start getting, like, getting that going? Yeah, so I basically, fast forwarding a little bit, I spent a lot of time in corporate. I spent, um five years as uh, the head of marketing for Huawei Technologies, which is a big tech company. Um, and effectively, as I was working there, I was learning so much and I had so much opportunity to reacquire really knowledge from great minds and talented people. Uh, but then back inside, I think right inside me, I always had the, the eagerness toward building something a little bit more for myself. And... Um, nobody really making money because i was absolutely well paid but it was really about making an impact and i felt that while i was there i only felt that at one point in my life i really wanted to make the impact that every single action i had taken uh, throughout my journey then would uh, would make sense um you know would kind of gave me that kind of trampoline to say well look i am what i learned what i've done i've kind of now uh coming together and structuring my trampoline to make an impact in people's lives. And I think that kind of solidified into the mastery app. Um, I think I was broken in so many areas of my life growing up as a kid that I wanted to create a company that would bring great minds together and would help other people uh, around the world uh, without the need of the proximity to basically uh, master aspects that are so important for, you know, business owner and uh, individual and for businesses. I do believe that uh, you can be a great business owner, but you could be a miserable person. Uh, you could be a great business owner, but you could be a miserable, a miserable uh, husband or father, right? So the, the mission of the Mastery Hub is really to elevate human potential by connecting great experts 
uh, great coaches and consultants, which are and which have over 10 years of experience in the areas of expertise and really connecting with people that they need specific help, specific coaching, specific consulting in that selected area. I'll give you a couple of examples. We do have a program in biohacking, which is how to optimize your, um, your biology, how to optimize your vitality and resilience in order to use your time and make the most out of it. Uh, we have one program in remote working and productivity uh, with, a, with a remote working uh, productivity consultant. It's helping people to kind of take the leap uh, forward and, uh, and become more productive in the way they structure the business from day one. We do have a one program in entrepreneurship and creativity and innovation, how to help people to get their ideas from a dream inside their universe to something that is actually tangible and has a plan. Uh, and then there are programs in conscious leadership, uh, communication, we have a program in conscious parenting. So the whole idea of this platform is really to really help people to elevate their potential, uh, to elevate human potential. I believe talking about obsession, I think obsession is great, but I think healthy obsession is better. Because if you're great at something, and if you can balance up so many areas of your life while being good and great, then, then you're, you're in a very good stage. You know, I feel that fast forward in 10 years from now, I don't only want to be a good business owner. I want to be a great dad. I want to be a great husband. I want to have a great body. I want to use my time in the best possible way. And I think that's the reason why I created the Mastery App, to give people the opportunity to really propel the life in so many different areas, the same areas that I was broken when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, 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 like I'm, I'm going to say it again, but yeah, like a hundred percent on that. Uh, and I absolutely love that. I, I love that, that you created a platform that, you know, um, pretty much puts like all these experts in one place where, you know, you can get experts on different things that can help you be a better person, whether that's like, you know, you said with the biohacking or, you know, like with different things that you sort of need ca coaching with it's, it's, it's sort of like life coaching, but instead of having one person that maybe, you know, ha is, has a broad skill set is good at, and is good at life coaching. But, you know, I, I, I think a better, you know, alternative to that is being able to have, let's say two or three different coaches that are very, very specific and specialized in certain areas of life. Um, and, and I think being able to match that up with like on what pl one platform, I, I think that's great. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, we got to the point where uh, life coaching is probably overused in other broad terms. And I feel that you could be great at something, but you cannot be, uh, let's say, um, in, a, in a position where you can help so many different people in so many different areas, right? You need that kind of knowledge. I mean, if you want someone that is expert in business, you're probably more likely to go to a business coach, right? Or uh, someone that has built something before rather than go to someone that has never done it. And even though he says that he can do it, he has never done it. So you want to make sure that you go to the right people that you know you will get the best and uh, the best possible result to really master the aspects of your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we're, we're coming to the end here. Uh, and, and yes, thank you a lot for, for coming on the show. It's, it's been absolutely amazing hearing about your story, like the beginning, he hearing about how you sort of got your start uh, in life and like the determination you have is absolutely amazing. I think uh, like I think a lot of people are going to get that because, um, you know, like you know, like some people that may be listening will try something maybe a couple of times and they'll be like, this is really hard. But then you just need to put it into perspective of saying like, hey, you know, I've only tried this four times where, you know, other people have tried it 300 times or 400 times or 500 times really trying to make it in the world. Right. So I, I, I think perspective is a, a, a huge thing in this episode. Um, but yeah, I, I absolutely love, you know, ha having you on the show. Uh, where can people find out more about you? Uh, yeah, they could they could follow me on uh, on LinkedIn. I'm uh, I'm extremely active. I share um, entertainment, um, personal growth tips, and marketing. Uh, they can find me at uh, Mirko uh, M I R K O, and the surname is uh, M A C 
A double R O N E. And they can find me there on LinkedIn or Mirko Mac on Instagram uh, with a K. And yeah. alternatively, if you want to check out the Mastery Hub, is themasteryhub.com. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you again, man, for, uh, for, for coming on the show, man. Really appreciate it, man. Thanks so much for having me.